Yeah. This is the life, isn't it? Eh? Well, after the watery theme of last week's promo at Tony O'Rourke, we thought we'd sort of keep the watery, leisurely theme continuing this week as we look back at just some of the special features that we've done throughout the year. <laughs> oh, thank you very much indeed. Mmm. Uh, ah. This is it. Money, beautiful women, and a lovely drink as well. Now, I'm going to start today's promo off with a look at uh, Bubba Mitchell and Dogs for Disabled. Quite a serious subject. We covered it earlier on in the year. And if you don't know what Dogs for the Disabled are all about, then maybe this will give you some idea. We're at the home of Caroline Oldfield, who's the chairperson for the local branch of Dogs for the Disabled. And we're also going to meet Larry. Larry, fetch the milk. Before we see what Larry can do, could you just outline the nature of your disability for us? I have arthritis, diabetes and asthma and a stability problem. What does that mean in terms of the restriction of your movement, the, how you, know, you can get about from place to place? I used not to be able to get out very much and now that I have Larry who goes with the harness. He gives me the confidence to go out because I lean on him and he's really transformed my life. What exactly is Larry trained to do for you? He is trained outside to cope with stability, uneven ground, help me up and down stairs when he's in harness. And indoors he helps me with my paper, my post, brings in my milk, um, loads and unloads my washing machine. So he actually puts the washing in and takes it out? Indeed, yes, but I haven't trained him yet to hang it up yet. So a lot of the restrictions in your life have, have disappeared. It's been alleviated enormously, and of course with mobility in the car, um, I can get out now quite quite a lot. Mm. It's been most helpful. And were you, were you not able to get out so much before? I was able to, but I was very um, lacking in confidence. It's very embarrassing when you're in a supermarket and you fall over, and suddenly from nowhere all people come, can I help you, can I help you? And the staff come with a wheelchair and say you must be checked over in case you've hurt yourself. And you feel highly embarrassed. Or you fall down between two cars in a multi-storey car park and you can't get up again. And there's nobody ever around to ask for help. And so, um, there again, Larry now can help me. I have the confidence to go out. So he's helped you on two fronts. He's helped you both from the point of view that you know you've got a friend around. And he actually physically helps you to get your balance. That's right, yes. Right. Yeah. Um, now, Larry is trained to do specific things for you, like you said, bringing the milk in, putting the washing in and out, but other dogs, for dogs for the disabled, actually do other things. What other things can they be trained to do? They can retrieve um, cordless telephones, to activate light switches, um, pull alarm bell cords uh, to get assistance, um, do. but then there are specific needs, of course. Um, for instance, we have one person who has no movement in an arm, but when it falls off the wheelchair arm, that his dog is trained to walk behind, balance the arm on his head, take three paces forward, oh, I've had enough of this, and tosses it back in the lap of you know, this person. So there are specific needs that they're then trained to do as well. Right. Um... And I might say that not all dogs for the disabled are in harness. Um, only the people with stability problems. Because disabilities come in all forms, wheelchairs, people on crutches, or, as in my case, um, a stability problem. Right. Now, also, um, I know when we've spoken about this previously, you've mentioned that sometimes um, people try and play with the dog when you're actually out walking with the dog, and that causes all sorts of problems for you. Can you explain that Well, for it us? does. Um, we put a dog in a command position, particularly at a counter, and if people then come up and encourage the dog by come here or holding out a pack of crisps or a child wanting to stroke the dog, um, the next thing you know, your arm is being taken away from you, pulled against your joints, and either I'm about to fall over. But the worst thing is they're encouraging the dog to be disobedient to me mm. or the, the, the owner. I mean, it could be a guide dog just as easily. Um, and it would be helpful if people were aware that these are working dogs and not pets and by all means ask the handler would it be all right if i touch your dog or stroke it then we can say um you know upstand or whatever and break and 
put the dog out of a command situation by saying free time and then that's fine mm. but um, just to come up behind the dog and stroke it of course his head's going to turn around and see what's happening and the next thing is I'm over or my arms have gone against my mm. joints or whatever mm. in addition to Larry's other talents Larry can pick up dropped items such as keys remote controls he picks up his own food bowl and he helps Caroline if she falls over every day Larry is put through his paces by Caroline and at the end of it all Caroline has taught Larry to wipe his own feet Good boy. Oh, this is the life, you know. Turn your rope, eat your heart out. Caroline Oldfield and the fabulous Larry the dog, and do watch out for the dogs for the disabled. They are actually trying to raise money for that organization at the moment. So if you see any press or anything like that, please do give generously. Oh, hang on a second. Yeah, hi. Hi, Steve. Oh, Tom, yeah? I'm in Chiswick. I've got Tom on the phone, yeah? Looking at mobile phone tagging. Oh, Tom, man, is going to tell us a little bit about how we can actually keep phones like this secure. Oh, it's over to you then, Tom. Hello. Is that Mr. Granger? Yes, who's that? You ever thought about investing in a car alarm? What? It's one o'clock in the morning. How about handbrake lock? No, look, who is this? What about Whoever you are. Just take a look in your driveway, mate. And by the way, love the car phone. Love them or hate them, mobile phones like this hand portable have been around now for nine years. They were once thought of as the fashion accessory of high-flying executives, but now they're an essential tool for nearly two million people. But lately, there's been a worrying new trend. This former status symbol has become a target for the criminals. While industry has been putting pressure on the government to tighten the law, here on the streets of Chiswick, police and community have been coming together in a practical new approach. Acting Chief Superintendent Ed Peel from the Chiswick Division has been testing a new system for tagging phones. Every month around 10,000 mobile phones are reported stolen across the country. It's a problem that accounts for 40% of all car crime in city centres. What's been the impact of this pilot programme here? We had a pilot uh, for two weeks with the firm of Securitel. It was linked into our motor vehicle crime initiative. And uh, we did have uh, quite a problem with uh, motor vehicle crime in general, but specifically with mobile phone theft from motor vehicles. And we found that the pilot has helped us to reduce that substantially. But what happens when the trial finishes and the criminals perhaps move elsewhere? Aren't you just really shifting the problem? Well, that, of course, is, is a great problem. It's a problem, I think, for the industry. It's a problem of coordination. It's where we go from here. Uh, we've tried to do things locally in that we're getting all our phones marked uh, locally, that's police phones, and uh, we now feel that the industry needs to take this on and to spread it wider. What lessons do you think are there for other forces around the country? Well, I think the first lesson is that motor vehicle crime or mobile phone theft uh, involving motor vehicle crime, it isn't um, a problem which cannot be solved, but it does need some clear thinking. Um, if you're prepared to spend a bit of time and a bit of effort in actually doing something about it, it you, you can actually do something about it and stop it. The Chiswick experiment shows one way of keeping the phone's identity even after rechipping. Peter Wolford is project manager with Securitel. Now, you've developed this tagging system. How does it work? Well, the phones are marked with a tag that carries a unique registration number, and that number is recorded against ownership details on a confidential database. If the phone is lost, the police can trace it through the database and get it back to its rightful owner. Anyone holding a phone that is marked like that is also in danger of being proved 